India at the front lawn. The festival brochure and flyer with details of the full program are available for purchase at the information desk. We are delighted to introduce Atal Bihari Vajpayee, the personal and the political. Atal Bihari Vajpayee's political legacy embodies the vast and kaleidoscope kaleidoscopic history of India post-independence. A wise statesman, spellbinding orator, and benevolent father figure, Vajpayee became the first non-Congress Prime Minister to serve a full five-year term and paved the way for the BJP's political dominance. He also embodied contradictions. He was both Hindutva, loyalist, and liberal centrist, poet, and politician a faithful member of the Sangh Parivar who led unapologetically an unconventional life. Senior journalist Sagari Kagosh, author of the political biography Indra, India's most powerful prime minister, presents a deeply researched, revealing personal portrait of Vajpayee in her new book, Atal Bihari Vajpayee. The book possesses a new insights and anecdotes from the pioneering politician's closest confidante, and provides a powerful lens from which to understand him. In conversation with journalist Mandira Nair, Ghosh discusses Atal Bihari Vajpayee, the man and legacy. Sagarika Ghosh is a noted journalist and author who spoke for the Indian Express and Outlook magazine and was a primetime news anchor on the network CNN IBN. She's the author of the best selling biography. Indira, India's most powerful prime minister, and the polemical work, Why I Am a Liberal, a manifesto for Indians who believe in individual freedom. Her most recent book is a biography of Atal Bihari Vajpayee, titled Vajpayee, India's Most Loved Prime Minister. She's also the author of two novels, The Gin Drinkers and Blind Faith. Presently, she's a columnist with the Times of India and appears as a commentator on NDTV. We welcome Sagarika Ghosh. Mandira Nair has been a journalist for nearly two decades. She currently works with The Week magazine, writing on books, history, culture, and foreign affairs. She's worked with The Hindu and The Telegraph and is a Charles Wallace scholar. We welcome Mandira Nair. Over to you. Hi. What? Hello? Yeah, it is. Okay, so good morning. Um, good afternoon, actually, and welcome to this, which is likely to be an incredibly interesting session. Um, and um, it's also a very timely session because, you know, the UPA elections have just happened. Um, and I think at the end of your book, when you've talked about Vajpayee, you talk about him uh, and another election um, in 2004, where he is, um, where he is in uncomfortable with the India shining uh, sort of election, a different kind of election that he's used to. Um, and he doesn't go with his guts, but he goes with the party. Elections in UP and now this time was also glitz and glamour. And I wanted to talk about the different kind of election fought in a way that Vajpayee probably wouldn't have. And how does that work out? And it certainly worked out very well for the BJP. So can we talk about how elections have changed, especially from Vajpayee time? Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, since this is a session on Atal Bihari Vajpayee, I thought I'd started with a poem because he was the poet prime minister. Yeah. So, um, Har nahi manunga, rar nahi thanunga, kaal ke kapal me likta mitata hu, geet naya gata hu. I, I know that uh, all of you perhaps know this poem of Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Uh, Vajpayee was India's Prime Minister, the first BJP Prime Minister, at a time when our lives were not so divided between camps, yes. liberal, not liberal, nationalist, not liberal, not nationalist, bhakt, kam bhakt, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, left, right, we have these divisions in our life now. Vajpayee was not that kind of a person. Yes. He was uh, someone who believed in dialogue. Yes. Uh, his closest friend was Hirendranath Mukherjee of yeah. the Communist Party. He was a Hindu nationalist. His close friend was a communist and Bhupesh Gupta. Yeah. And I think when Vajpayee fought elections, I've covered many of his rallies. Uh, 
you didn't see so much gadgetry and the clap trap of uh, sort of uh, uh, PR exercises. You know, those were different days when the leader stood on stage and spoke and made jokes and uh, was very funny. And Vajpayee was extremely funny. Uh, he was a man of jokes, and he used to have the audience in splits, and he used to have the audience laughing. Uh, so covering rallies and elections at that time was not a, a sort of a harking to any kind of uh, primeval passions, mm. but in fact a very funny, jokey uh, exercise. And in 1999, Vajpayee contested elections against Dr. Karan Singh of the Congress. Yeah. And they were such good friends that they would hold rival rallies and then they would go and have a cup of chai together. So uh, I think that was uh, Vajpayee's politics. It was a politics of a different time. Uh, today, we are so divided and so polarized. But uh, Vajpayee also, you know, was, uh, was an MP from Lucknow. He won from Lucknow five times. Um, he used to love eating the makkhan malai and the uh, rasgullas and, and the gulab jamuns of Lucknow. Uh, he wrote poetry on the rose petals and the uh, Laila Majnu love stories of Lucknow. So it was a different sensibility uh, altogether. And I think that, you know, what we can learn from Vajpayee during elections and what we can learn from Vajpayee in politics is that you can be friends you can have love, you can have sympathy, you can't have dosti, even if you don't have a hundred percent agreement. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you can disagree, but at the same time, you can still love someone or be friends with someone or, or reach across to the aisle with, with someone and perhaps not be in full um, agreement with them on ideology. Mm. You know, so vichar dhara alag alag ho sakte hain. But dosti to ho sakti hai, mitrata ho sakti hai, pyar ho sakta hai, even if vichardhara are different and ideologies are different. So, uh, you know, I like that you started with a poem because I think it's very important to remember that there was, a, uh, you know, that there was, that he was a poet and, yeah. you know, Vajpayee was this incredible poet. You've, you know, you've also his contradictions, which, yes. you know, um, actually come out in his poetry. So, yes. you know, you've got uh, Rang Rang Me Hindu, where yeah. he is, where he talks yeah. about that. And then you also have him talk about, uh, uh, you know, the Jung poem where he is, where yes. Jung nahi hone dunga. Jung nahi hone um, and I wanted to talk to you really about that, you know, before we, you know, we talk about his oratory skills, of course. And he was wonderful. This very Ganga Jamni, yes, this sort yes. of, um, uh, you know, uh, satire with yeah. uh, with uh, Lucknow, yeah. this whole yeah, thing yeah. where there was, um, you know, where where speeches actually made or broke elections in some ways. They did, you know, they they did. Did. there was oratory, there was, you know, there was, um, you know, use of word. There was, um, you know, it was a different time. It was, it yeah. was almost like, um, you know, it was well crafted. You it know, it was. Um, to now, where do you think there is a certain but ideology? And I wanted to talk to you about Vajpayee's contradiction in some ways. Yeah. You know, while we're looking at him right now in a very different world, in a much more hardened, um, uh, sort of camped world, yeah. there was space for someone like Vajpayee yeah. where there was a certain contradiction. But you know, so can we talk really about his contradiction? The man who you have this wonderful anecdote about during the Babri, during the Rath, Rath Yatra. Yes. Um, and could you just talk about where he talks about sure. Advani and the Rath I Yatra? I mean, uh, when he, you know, when the Rath Yatra is happening, the Ram Janmabhumi movement is happening, Vajpayee says, ye to notanki hai, ye to drama baaz hai, because he was a politician of a different kind. He preferred to give speeches and, you know, uh, sway people. And then he could go to Pakistan and quote Ali Sadar Jafri's wonderful lines, uh, tum Ao, uh, Gulshan -e se chaman bardosh, hamai subah banaras ki roshni lekar, phir iske baad ye puche ki kaun dushman hai. You know, so uh, that was also the kind of uh, uh, a pose, that was a kind of public uh, sort of uh, face he was. Uh, he was someone who believed in reconciliation, someone who believed in dialogue, and also I think that someone who uh, 
did use the Hindu nationalist movement, uh, you know, in a very calculating way, even though he always cleverly publicized his disagreement with it. Because, you know, he was also someone who wrote, Me rag rag me Hindu, Tanman Hindu, rag rag Hindu, Hindu mera pehchan. Yeah. So uh, he was also uh, very steeped in Hindutva and steeped in, you know, in, in the RSS. Raj, uh, Vajpayee was a uh, Swayam Sevak all his life. He joined the RSS when he was a very, very young boy. Against his father's yeah, wishes, really, yeah. he, he yeah. joined the RSS. But he was tremendously open minded and tremendously plural within the RSS, you know. And I think, you know, after when I was writing the biography of him, I thought that he would get tremendous uh, joy that a Parkati Mahila in a sari is writing a biography of him. You know, I think he would be he yeah, would be quite yeah. quite sort of uh, quite sort of quite sort of chuffed by that. Yeah. So I think he was a person of contradictions, and I think that you know, Mandira, I think the the way to understanding Vajpayee is to first look at his personal. Uh, life. Uh, life. Yeah. yeah. You know, he was someone who lived all his life with a married woman who he had been in love with in college. He lived with her all his life and her family, her uh, husband and uh, her, her, Call, her yeah. and her children. And this was Mrs. Call. This was Rajkumari Haksar. And, um, you know, I tried to make sense of this relationship and try to understand what was this relationship all about. And actually, it is a relationship that can be summed up as, you know, pyar ko pyar hi rehne do, ise koi naam na do. Yeah. And uh, I think in those days, you know, in the 1930s and 1940s, people who joined the freedom movement or who joined the great Gandhi-led freedom struggle did become very unconventional about their personal lives. Yeah. You know, I mean, you had, you know, you had this tumult in politics where you sort of left your homes, you left your family life and you plunged into Andolan. Yeah. And uh, in the Andolan, you uh, perhaps you forgot about, you know, middle class mores and conventional relationships and uh, a conventional personal life because you had, you know, Ramano Loya, for example, yeah. lived all his life with a woman he never married. Yeah. Uh, Gandhi wrote very openly about his experiments with celibacy and uh, yeah. and uh, you know brahmachari. Nehru had several you know women friends who uh, he uh, he pursued emotionally uh, engaged yeah. relationships yeah. with, and I think Bajpai also, in his way, joining the RSS, becoming a swayam sevak, pursued um, a very unconventional relationship all his life, and I think this marked him as an irreverent. You know, it yeah. marked him as an iconoclast. And he was an icon iconoclast about lots of things, about ideology, about personal life, about politics. Mm -hmm. You know, so the doctrinaire, Hindu nationalist, RSS uh, dogma uh, never appealed to him. He was in the RSS. He was a Swayam Sevak. I don't think Vajpayee was a liberal. No. I don't think he was a liberal yeah. like you and I would yeah. be. Yeah. But uh, he still at the same time held to the notion that I'm not going to let ideology or I'm not going to let Vichardhara dictate who I am. I'm not going to let it take over my life. I am greater than the ideology and I am greater than the Vichardhara and I am greater than the school of thought. So he was irreverent even about an ideology which he, uh, which he uh, adopted and held to all his life, you know, because he, Often Vajpayee was asked as a sort of liberal pluralist and a right wing uh, Hindu nationalist party good man, that are party. you the good man in the bad, bad party? party yes. And he used to say, no, I'm not the good man in the bad party because you can't like the fruit and not okay. like the tree. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Vajpayee kind of rejected that uh, that notion. And uh, and I think that he but, you know, again, the idea was that you can have ideology and still listen to somebody else. Yeah, uh, you can be you can believe in something very, um, very strongly, strongly, but at the same time, understand other people. And I think this quality is what we're losing. I know we're losing the art of understanding somebody else, looking across and the, the art of dialogue in some dialogue, you know, the art of dialogue. So, and and I think this was what Vajpayee was all about. True. And I so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about you know we are talking about Vajpayee you know at a point of time where like you know and we've talked about the art of dialogue. We've talked about various things. We've talked about in some ways the lessons that Vajpayee has taught yeah. us. You've also written a biography about Indira Gandhi. Yeah. 
um and i wanted to talk to you you know in this point of time when we are looking at 75 years of independence yeah. and we are looking at all the prime ministers and various things and we sort of taking stock of the legacy that we have um you know where you have this galaxy you have a place for you know the, the indra is central to the congress yes. right um her legacy is something that even the bjp uh wants to claim you know the yeah. 1971 the most successful war yeah. against pakistan uh where does do you think vajpayee's legacy and you know would in the same is central where does it is it central to the bjp where does that fit into bjp right now that's a very good question uh i'm so glad you brought up indira gandhi which was my other biography you know if you if i look at indira gandhi and vajpayee and and think about is there anything that uh unites these two people and i think that you know people who are destined to leave their stamp on history have one personal quality that uh, that that is there in all these people which is that they have this sense of man- manifest destiny yeah. you know that i'm special that there's a reason why things are happening to me that uh there is something about me that uh that wins people over you know so i think indira had it she was nehru's daughter she was india's princess yeah. and vajpayee certainly had it that i am vajpayee i am me main hu na yeah. and so uh who is the rss to tell me what to do or who is you know golwalkar to tell me what to do i mean he was golwalkar's favorite politician yeah. and golwalkar's golden boy yeah, yeah, right. but who is anybody to tell me what to do i am vajpayee he yeah. was a star from the age of 20, uh, of 30 he was a speaking star and i think that uh you know when we look at these people and their and their and their positions within their respective parties a uh, vajpayee's position was very different from indira gandhi's i'll give you a small anecdote uh about vajpayee and some of his party colleagues you know vajpayee was a great um, he was a great drinker he loved his drink uh he loved his non vegetarian food his chicken and his prawn and his uh his meat and all of that so he was a very zinda dil uh, you yeah, know very like, sort of talky like shocky person yeah. and uh so there was this one dinner where his party colleagues were sitting with him and he was uh he was there and uh, one of the one of his colleagues is nana ji deshmukh and uh, said to vajpayee uh deen dayal upadhyay mere sapne mein aaye hain Din Dayal Upadhyay was the great, uh, you know, great leader of the Janasang and the RSS. मेरे सपने में आए हैं. I don't know. Does everybody follow Hindi? Yeah. So मेरे सपने में आए हैं और उन्होंने कहा कि चिकन मत खाओ. So Vajpayee turned around and said, "Arey Nana Ji, because this was Nana Ji Deshmukh. Arey Nana Ji, इतने बड़े शख्स आपके सपने में आते हैं और बस इतना ही कहते हैं कि चिकन मत खाओ." so you know i mean this was the kind of um a fun he made of his own party yeah you know and uh, vajpayee once went abroad in 1988 um uh, when he had a kidney ailment actually rajiv gandhi then the prime minister sent him uh, on a un delegation so he could have his kidney ailment taken care of and uh, it turned out that it was a very serious illness and at that time uh, and it was you know it was cancer so he wrote a poem maut se than gayi you know his famous poem maut se than gayi and this poem maut se than gayi was sent to india and all his party men said oh my god vajpayee ji ne kya likha hai maut se than gayi kya vajpayee ji you know is he dying is he passing away is he kya guzar gaye kya wo kya hua you know is he dying is he at death's door it then turned out that the ailment was not that serious and actually he was cured so he came back to india and when he came back to india he found crowds of his party men gathered at the airport and uh, loads of them gathered at the airport and he said why have all these people come and so uh, uh, his his assistant shivakumar and i've recorded this with shivakumar in an interview shivakumar said dekhiye dekhiye kitne log aaye hain aapse milne see how many people have come so vajpayee turned around and said ये ये देखने आए हैं क्योंकि ये ये सोच रहे हैं कि अभी तो मौत का दस्तावेज लिखकर भेजा था अभी जिंदा कैसे लौट आया सो दैट वाज हिज दैट वाज हिज सॉर्ट ऑफ यू नो इन अ वे आई आई थॉट इट वाज रिवीलिंग ऑफ हाउ इन अ वे डिस्टेंट ही वाज या फ्रॉम यू नो फ्रॉम द पार्टी फेथफुल नाउ यू नो अडवाणी वाज मच मोर स्टीप्ड इन द party organization and with yeah. karyakartas and yeah. all that bajpayee was always the slightly as i say the iconoclast yeah. and irreverent person who was at a distant at a distance in fact from um 
uh, you know, from his party in that sense. So I'm so glad. I'm glad that you brought in Advani because you know, in yeah. the book, you talk a really a little bit about you talk a lot really about the organization, okay, yeah. and how they were in some ways the J and Viru sort yeah. of combination yeah. where yeah. there is one and you cannot have the other. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, um, so can you talk really about this relationship, which was in uh, was as you said about Advani uh, said he was his closest friend. Gan- Vajpayee never returns that favor. Essentially, this um, is, is Advani his sidekick. This rivalry. That's this an excellent. Yes, that's an excellent question. I mean, today when we look at the BJP and we look at uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, we have to think about Atal Bihari Vajpayee and L K Advani. Because without these two people, the entire movement that today is so dominant would never have been built. Uh, and theirs was a relationship which was very close. It was very um, mutually interdependent. And I think that you know, in any relationship, there are always changes in power, right? Uh, you start with a very powerful equation of one person always a dominant star, and the other person then later becomes dominant. And uh, you know, and there's a, and there's a problem because when the power equation changes, there's always a problem in the relationship. So when they first met, uh, Vajpayee was uh, the star. He was, you know, Guru Gal- Golwalkar's favorite uh, politician. He was, uh, uh, you know, he was a speaking star. He was a Lok Sabha star. Advani was very much on the side, and he was very much, uh, you know, not uh, not widely known. But then later on, as their relationship progressed, after a few, uh, after many years in the 1990s, when Advani became the uh, hero of the Hindu nationalist movement, then Advani became the sort of yeah, Hindu yeah. Riday Samrat. And that's when Vajpayee became actually very jealous and resentful. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I realized this, that here was someone who was very poetic and, you know, uh, taking a very wide view of the world and very universalist. But he could be very, very ambitious and very, very bitter if somebody threatened his turf. Yeah. You, you know, and this is a similarity with both Vajpayee and Indira and Gandhi. Gandhi. Yes. They both wanted center stage you know you they both wanted the limelight and you take the limelight away from them they became very unhappy and if anyone took away the limelight from them then they would be very very sort of bitter and 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 resentful of that person you know uh and i think that you know it's interesting that Vajpayee and um advani both had very powerful daughters yes They both had very powerful daughters. And I think the daughters very much were possessively adoring of their respective patriarchs. And I think they uh, are our friendships uh, just monochrome or do they have lots of different colors? Yeah. Uh, You know, there can be love, there can be hate, there can be affection, there can be closeness, there can be jealousy. There can be rivalry. There can be rivalries in any friendships, right? Any friendship is shot through with uh, all kinds of strands. And I think that's what their relationship was. But I think ultimately it was moored in a lot of mutual respect. And I think without this relationship, there would be no BJP and there would probably be no Mr. Narendra Modi. So you talk about this friendship, but you also say something very interesting where you say that when you asked Advani, when Advani's asked, he's always says Vajpayee is his closest friend. My closest friend, friend, but Vajpayee never says that. So there is this aspect of an unequal friendship. Yeah, kind of unrequited love almost. You know, but I think Advani sort of had a sort of unrequited uh, devotion to Vajpayee. Yeah. yeah. Uh, And you know, in Vajpayee's memoirs, he really doesn't mention Advani even once. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he mentions him only in one line. He actually mentions Indira Gandhi. He mentions Jawala Nehru. Nehru. He was very no, Jawala was... Nehru. He mentions all the time. Yeah. He mentions Indira Gandhi. He mentions Rajiv Gandhi. He mentions Madhav Rao Sindhya. He mentions Vijay Rajay Sindhya. Barely mentions Advani even in a line. Okay. So I think that uh, you know, I think that that that's quite telling. That's quite telling. And I think it's it's the case in every uh, you know in every friendship. But I think that you know, I think what. We need to understand from Vajpayee, and I think those of us who value debate, who value parliament, you know, because Vajpayee was ultimately all about parliament. And if you read the speeches of those years, you know, the 1950s and 1960s, it was the golden era of parliament. I mean, such incredible speeches. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are, they are witty, they're funny, they're full of jokes, they're full of argument, full of humor. And that was a speech, uh, you know, the, the, the great speakers of the time, Hirendranath uh, Mukherjee, Bhupesh Gupta, uh, you know, uh, Minu Masani, uh, Lohia, 
uh, J.B. Kripalani. These are the great names of parliament who really shone in those debates. And Vajpayee was very much part of that uh, uh, parliamentary brilliance uh, of, that, of the 1950s and 1960s. So, uh, you know, when people ask me what is the difference, say, between uh, Vajpayee as a politician and Modi as a politician, mm -hmm. I would say the first difference is that, you know, Vajpayee was in parliament, not for 10 years, not for 20 years, not for 30 years, not for 40 years, but for almost 50 years. He was for 50 years in parliament, operating as a parliamentarian, opposing through that, through the little uh, party of the Jansang, this gigantic juggernaut, which was the Nehruvian Congress. Because, you know, the Nehru-led Congress yeah. was a Leviathan in those days, and Vajpayee was the opposition leader working in parliament against the Nehruvian Congress. Uh, Mr. Modi's never been in parliament. He joined parliament only in 2014. Mm. But uh, so he doesn't work within the ambit of parliament. But Vajpayee was through and through a creature of, a parliament. Creature of parliament and a creature of parliamentary norms and practices. You yeah. know, uh, the, the rules of parliament, the norms of parliament, and he keeps saying this, the rules and norms of democracy and the rules and norms of parliament. Please, in ka palan ki ji. You know, mm. don't, don't, don't let the rules and norms disappear. Because if you, uh, if you don't obey the rules, if you don't obey the norms, if you don't obey the kaide kanun mm. of yeah. parliamentary democracy, uh, you will not have democracy. And, and I think that's where again, is the value of Vajpayee, that you may have opposing ideologies, you may have opposing viewpoints, but within parliament and within democracy, you obey the rules, norms, kaide, kanun of sansadiya loktantra, or parliamentary democracy. You know, and that, that's, I think that's the key. And I think that, you know, today, uh, if only the ideologies we had today would locate themselves within parliament, within that shared democratic culture of values, because we have to share the same democratic values of tolerance, of debate, of restraint, of respecting democracy. You know, if we respect democracy, and then we can operate within democracy. And that's what Vajpayee did. He was a parliamentary demo democrat operating within parliament. Uh, you know, uh, which is why uh, the Ram movement in that sense was to some extent made him uncomfortable because it was not parliamentary. But, uh, but to operate within parliament, to operate within the norms of parliament and the rules of parliament, this was the essence of Vajpayee. So I wondered, I'm glad you brought up the Ram Mandir issue yeah. because, you know, there is an anecdote um, that you talk about where some, where, uh, where Advani is, where Vajpayee, where uh, who requests Vajpayee to say that this is becoming very the when Advani is doing the Rath Yatra they say he, they call him up and say please in Roko because hmm. you know there is yes there is this it's becoming too much and it's polarizing yeah, yeah. and he says he tells Advani and Advani says that's when uh, yeah. Lalu Yadav yeah. came up to uh, Sorry, Vajpayee Lalu, yeah. and said uh, Vajpayee ji, ye rath yatra ko rokiye, isse bohot dange fail rahe hain, log idhar udhar, you know, dek dusre ko maar kaat ho raha hai, aap isko rokiye. So uh, Vajpayee told Advani, uh, told Vajpayee, Vajpayee told Advani that kya hai, sab ho raha hai kya rath yatra mein. And uh, Advani said, Vajpayee ji, kya baat kar rahe hain, to itne saare log aar rahe hain, bheer dekhiye, yeah. itni bheer hai. Yeah. So uh, then Vajpayee turned on and said, sab bheer hai, phir thik hai. So this is, you know, so uh, if if, the, if there was a crowd, if there were lots of people there and lots of people were coming to this uh, particular event, then that acquired its own morality. Yes, you know, that acquired its own uh, its own sense in that sense. So, so in that sense, you know, I, I I think he I think he failed the test of constitutional democracy many times, but I also think that he passed it several times as well. So this was one occasion where he you know where he went along with a movement that he knew would catapult him to power. Yeah. So there is this aspect of power, ideology, politics. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that one of the things that we have to accept that ideology, uh, you know, for political gain, ideology is one aspect. You, yeah. just, you know, it makes. Yeah. So, you know, and this is a question I wanted to ask you. And I think in your book, you've got the Ram Janmabhumi thing. You've got that. Uh, you've got Vajpayee, who is a supportive of this morality that it is acquired. But yet it isn't as divisive as today. Yeah. Uh, you know, there is a certain aspect of divisiveness of, 
uh, that exists today uh, sort of hatred um, yeah. is it because of social media do you think it is india's change hindutva has changed why do you think that is and i think you say that at some point of time this was the way that it was going to go everybody yeah. had dabbled with it indira gandhi had dabbled with it yeah, so how are destined to be here as we are you know are we destined to a future of religious hatred uh do hindus and muslims and sikhs and jains have to take up arms against each other uh are we destined to a future of religious hostilities where we judge everybody according to their religious identity and uh, religion becomes so important for us that we uh, lose friendships we lose relationships uh we lose uh, contact with one another because we are fighting a religious civil war Mm. Uh, I think this would have been completely unacceptable to Vajpayee because for him human relationships were most important. And you know one of the things I discovered uh, about Vajpayee when I was uh, doing the book is that he never actually went to a temple or uh, prayed or uh, actually never even had a puja in his house. Mm. So uh you know he was in fact more or less an atheist. So I think that uh, for someone like Vajpayee the idea would was always politics you know the idea was always to challenge the congress the idea was always to become the national alternative to the congress mm -hmm. uh the idea was never to actually plunge into a religious war or to plunge into any kind of hatred i mean bajpai went to kashmir and spoke of kashmiriyat insaniyat jamhuriyat yes. he went to pakistan and said jang na hone denge Gulam Nabi Azad the Congress leader every year used to have a iftar and Vajpayee used to come and wear a skull cap and all of that so uh i think in in Vajpayee's world view uh hatred or uh personal animosity because of religion i think would have been unheard of i i can't see him being on twitter i can't see him being on facebook he was a he was a politician who used to make these long yes. speeches you know yes. we were in television at that, at that time and when vajpai began speaking we would say are baap re ye kab khatam hoga ek shabd fir aadhe ghante yeah. ka time fir ek aur shabd yeah. and another 20 minutes and one more line so uh he was a very long drawn out very sort of deliberate speaker and i think that uh, in that sense um Uh, he was far too much of a lover of human beings and far too much of a lover of people to actually uh, you know to accept that religious hatred or religious religious identity could tear you apart from other people so it so, so I, again this is about iconoclasm yeah, right it's about yeah. being irreverent that why should i when i want to be friendly with someone or i want to be have a relationship with someone or i have a have a, have a, a lovely equation with someone why should religion um interfere why should religion have that power to interfere so he had a great uh, no uh, you know he had a great sort of uh, exchange of words with roshanara begum yeah. roshanara begum the pakistani great yeah, pakistani yeah. singer had yeah. come to sing in uh, in uh, in delhi and vajpai said uh, uh, aap to sur mein gaate hain aur aap kabhi mat ye sochiye ki main asur hu yeah. you know so yeah. uh, so i mean i think he was always you know on this this play of words and uh, assuaging others about his own uh, interests and his own uh, you know his own his own uh, commitment to friendship and human beings and human values okay so that's a great way to end our conversation i think we have 10 minutes and we have questions So is there are there questions in the audience uh, and ma'am we request you to pick out the people Oh I have to pick out no, the people so no, are there yeah. so there is a gen, there's a lady right in front with dark glasses Sorry yeah yeah before we end the session can I just say another of course, poem yeah. of Vajpayee please, please please So yes. this is another poem that I'm sure you love and this is a, a life lesson for life it's kya haar mein kya jeet mein किंचित नहीं भयभीत में संघर्ष पथ पर जो भी मिले ये भी सही वो भी सही दैट्स वंडरफुल एंड आई थिंक दैट सम्स हिम अप कंप्लीटली जी वन सेकंड कैन द लेडी आस आंसर फर्स्ट ए अम सॉरी आई नो सो ए नॉट ए दैट लेडी इज ऑलरेडी स्टूड अप लेट लेट द यूथ हैव लेट द यंग हैव अ वॉइस फर्स्ट सॉरी नॉट बीइंग एजेस दो 
So I'm going to ask a little bit of an ageist question, I guess. Um, I feel like everybody here and everybody in general is very moved by Vajpayee and his legacy, his poetry. Like, I feel like especially older people here, like there's such a romanticization and they love to hear his speeches or his poetry. But then also, like, I just feel like since you've been covering politics for a long time and you've met people over decades, where do you think that gap is or where is that bridge between hundreds of thousands of people loving Vajpayee and his legacy and his poetry and the hardline politics that we follow today? If you can just give That's your That's a very views. good question. Uh, you know, my biography is not a hagiography, so it's not a, it's not just an exercise in romanticization. Vajpayee failed the test of constitutional democracy many times. Um, he failed it in 1970 during the Bhiwandi riots when he said, Ab Hindu mar nahi uh, He failed it in, uh, you know, in 1992 when he, in Ayodhya he made that very inflammatory speech, Vedi to banegi. Uh, he failed it during the Ram Mandir movement. He failed it in Gujarat. Uh, in Gujarat, he did want to, at that stage, uh, have the uh, Gujarat administration sacked. But his party was against it and he went along with his party. Vajpayee was, at the end of the day, a weak man. You know, he was weak. He was what the letter writer Junius and I've quoted him saying, calls him a, a middle compound character. He was a middle compound character. He could see where he went wrong and be ashamed about it, but couldn't do anything about it. Because ultimately, he was driven by ambition. I mean, I would say Vajpayee was the ultimate political careerist. You know, he, he did what he wanted to because he wanted to advance his political career. So sometimes he was a populist nationalist in the Janasang. Sometimes he was with the Janta Party. Sometimes he was with the Ram Mandir movement. Sometimes he was, you know, going along with the Gujarat riots. So while, so this is, this is, this is, uh, you know, Mandira had a lovely line. You know, when you write a biography of someone, you look at people who are uh, not convenient. You can't put them in this box or this box or this box, but they're real. You know, they're real people. They're human people with a lot of light and dark. Uh, so I think that in that sense, you know, we also, when we're as biographers, we can't deify someone, you know, we can't make someone a statue or a monument. You know, the, the task of the biographer is to find the truth in a particular person, you know, like method acting, if you're playing Richard III or Napoleon, you have to find the truth in the person. So I think that there were light shades of light and dark. I think at the end of it, I would say he was morally frail. He was a careerist. He was, you know, he did take uh, opportunities when they came to him. But then he was also lots of other things. <laughs> so I think, I think we're looking at a, at a, at a whole, you know, not as, uh, not as uh, uh, just uh, someone who can be boxed easily. Can, I, can the gentleman in front ask and then you? Without it, I will do. I don't need it. What, ah. what is the, what is the what definition, definition of religion? Can, can we have a question, not a comment? So that is a question, but you want to give that the answer. That is a question. I think religion is the... the, uh, the the ideal, the I, the traditions of faith centered around a particular uh, object of worship. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Sir, ekam sat vipraha veda vadanti. 
it's the same same god different roads to the same god but you got it thank you so much thank you so much Hi. yes can you please yes yes, yes please you? go ahead of course i know the young man there Yeah, you're the one the from the young, young man, the, the gentleman, the, the gentleman who's Instagram putting up with his right? hand. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so good afternoon, ma'am. I am Prasoon, ma'am, and we had this amazing session on this book. But I am surprised that you were talking about poems of Atal Bihari Vajpayee, yeah. but nobody talked about the amazing poems that you yourself have penned down in the book. Yes, so that's true. You, we should get so her to read one. So you had this amazing, uh, these amazing letters in the book uh, of Indira Gandhi, and now you have written for the poet politician. Yes. You have yourself penned down poems. So how did you go about those poems that you have written? Thank you so much. That's a lovely question. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah. So when I was writing about Indira Gandhi, Indira Gandhi was a great letter writer. Uh, she used to write a lot of letters to people. So I thought you know it would be nice to write letters to Indira Gandhi, asking her why she did what she did. You know why did you? impose the emergency or why did you uh you know uh push in your son into the congress party so uh, i wrote them in uh, as part of uh, the persona that i was covering and vajpai was is all about poetry i think poetry enabled his politics and politics enabled his poetry uh so i did i did compose these poems uh, and i thought that uh, you know if uh, if uh, vajpai ji was still around i thought he may have enjoyed them uh, when i did an interview with vajpai once he asked me ki kya aapne meri kavitae padhi hai i said yeah nahi maine maine padha nahi hai so then he said uh, par english mein to hai nahi ye to sare hindi mein hai to aap kaise padhengi i said yes yes of course i'll read them so I, i mean i'll know hindi he said ha par kabhi kabhi mujhe lagta hai ki mujhe main english mein likhu mujhe english mein likhna hai so i just thought in you know as a harking to that conversation that i would uh, uh, that i would uh, uh, compose these poems okay. <laughs> there are we have time for two more questions the gentleman at the back who's standing up i am dr varun kol i wonder if atal bihari vajpayee only remains a poster boy for the bharatiya janata party rather than a person who sets ideals of democracy for the party to very follow. good point you know all this azadi ka mahotsav celebrations that is happening where is vajpayee where is atal bihari vajpayee the man who uh, built uh who founded the bjp we don't see vajpayee anywhere nehru is absent by his, his nehru is absent but his presence looms large so we don't see jawaharlal nehru we don't see atal bihari vajpayee and uh i think that uh, that is very sad that the bjp has lost someone who located the entire hindu nationalist ideology within parliament he located it within parliament not outside parliament on the street but within parliament he said this ideology has every right to exist because it exists within parliament lots of questions there we can only have one more i, I think the, 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 the uh can i actually ask the lady because i want to be gender correct you can ask the question to sagarika later Hello ma'am uh, my question is do you think the bjp does not really want to have uh, vajpayee as a picture boy because uh, uh, in a sense that the kind of uh, uh, person who is right now in power uh, i don't see him following any of the lines that vajpayee followed yeah. that's very true i mean vajpayee as in his, in his personal life you know was a great uh, lover of art he was a great lover of alcohol uh he was a great lover of ve- non vegetarian food i think the food bans and all that that are happening now uh would have shocked vajpay completely you know there was one very in- interesting incident when he was going in the prime minister's 
uh, prime minister's plane to the US and a journalist asked him ki hum New York ja rahe hain sir uh, uh, you know what would you like to tell us about New York and so he asked this journalist actually it was Rajdeep he said uh, uh, Rajdeep kya aap non vegetarian hain aap to pakka non vegetarian honge to Rajdeep said yes i am a non vegetarian so he said acha ab main batata hu ki kahan aapko sabse acha steak milega you know now uh, can we imagine uh, a prime minister bjp prime minister today saying something like that i don't think so uh, vajpayee had very close relationship with lots of women artists um, you know uma sharma was one of the yeah. joys of his life <laughs> and uh, he had this very unconventional personal life as i said uh, you know and the sang was always shuddering in outrage at his whiskey drinking meat eating ways and i think that uh, that's why i think he's too much of a uh, maverick and too much of an iconoclast and too much of a sort of uh, odd ball you know he is the wheat me meat eating whiskey drinking odd ball who was married who was living with a married who was living, living with a married woman all his life and um, who uh, who actually you know had fallen in love with her and never married and yeah, uh, yeah, and asked her yeah, yeah. so there was one press conference in fact and i'll give you this uh, really nice anecdote uh, at the press conference with bajpai was foreign minister in the janta government and he was asked ki um, he was you know questions were being asked about china tibet etc and uh, one journalist stood up and said are vajpayee ji ye china aur tibet ke bare mein chhodiye aap boliye mrs call ke sath aapka kya relationship hai and uh, vajpayee turned around and said kashmir jaisa mamla hai <laughs> so uh, so it was it was that kind of a, a person he was and then he also said uh, you know main to kuwara hu par main brahmachari nahi hu yeah. you yeah. know so uh, so he would have that kind of uh, things he was always had the audience in splits in press conferences you know the journalist neena vyas once asked him ki are vajpayee ji aap to margin mein hain aap to marginalized ho gaye hain aap bilkul margin mein hain so uh, vajpayee turned around said are madam correction karne ke liye margin ki zarurat hota hai you know so that you need to make corrections in the margin and that's exactly what happened because you know uh, when the bjp was trying to climb back into the mainstream after the demolition of the babri masjid they needed the meat eating whiskey drinking uh, you know odd ball who who loved his scotch as much as he loved bharatiya sanskriti uh, to come to the fore and take the bjp into alliances so uh, in that sense he was useful to the bjp in the era of yeah, coalition so politics but that's why probably the bjp today doesn't can't uh, accept the um, uh, you know the unbearable individuality of atal bihari vajpayee and his many incorrigible contradictions uh, i think it would be uh, he himself would probably be a misfit he'd probably be firmly in the mark darshak mandal at the moment you know he would uh, uh, he would probably not uh, Uh, so the colorful individuality of atal bihari vajpayee uh, i think uh, is is not welcome today in the bjp so by the book there's a gentleman oh, there's there one who's more been raising yeah. his hand for the for so, long time okay sorry <laughs> one more question okay, okay sorry out of time sorry okay, sorry we'll have sorry. to see it later you're signing your book right yes at the book signing Ask Thank all you. your questions to Sagrika. Buy a book and ask her a question. Yeah. Ask two. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, <laughs> yeah, just really. Yeah. On that note, we'd like to thank Sagrika Ghosh and Mandira Nair. <laughs> thank you thank, thank you, you. <laughs> great please know that signing desk located at author signing lounge behind the seating arrangement at the front lawns dear guests you are requested to please help us in keeping the festival venues clean and dispose of your waste in the waste bins placed across hotel clerks amir please do not leave your bags unattended as the festival is unable to take responsibility for any loss of belongings 
Please ensure your phones are placed in silent model while you need to have an urgent conversation. Please do so outside the venue. And please tweet using hashtag Jaipur Literature Festival 2022 and tag at Jaipur Lit Fest. Thank you. Thank you.